Hello and welcome to the Academy. In this video, I wanted to show you how to have a better chance at winning against weather decks with the Life Coach's Consume deck. Since I saw a lot of people on the boards asking about what cards to tech in because they get wrecked by weather, but you don't usually have to tech in anything. I have two gameplay videos of going against weather decks and I'll explain how I tried to beat them. Now here you want to try to keep one of your warriors, one of the spider guys, and a harpy. It's pretty much the optimal start to any match of this deck. Make sure you have no double witches. No double neckers. Now turn one you want to play a spider like usual. If they're lucky, they'll blizzard or whatever that row right away. Which they tend to do a lot. Do that you want to play your harpy in the top row. Because your spiders are going to be spawning in the ranged row. And they usually always want to destroy these eggs. Which they can usually only do with a weather like blizzard. So that will take out a second blizzard. There it is. Now if you're lucky a harpy will spawn down in the ranged row. So you can eat that. Or else you're going to have to... Put your warrior up in the top row to eat those harpies and spawn the spiders down there. When you put them in this position, they know they usually have to use another frost to take care of this row right here. He uses his hero power to do. Now at this point, I've taken out three blizzards in this deck. And I know I've lost the first round, which you usually always do against weather. The point is to try to take as many of his weather cards with you round one as you can. And don't play any golds. You don't want to play any golds round one against weather decks, because you're always going to lose round one, chances are. Now here I wanted my warrior to eat one more time, just to boost my necker up some, but... I'd have to play an 11 cost card or one of my golds to even have a chance of making him play anything else and not just passing. And I already took out three blizzards so I figured just pass here. Because usually if you do this, this is the point you want to pass. And give him the first round win. And I'm one card ahead. Which he's going to play first which is going to put me two cards ahead in round three. I pass, he passes. Round one's over. Now round two is where it's okay to start playing your golds, and you usually do. He plays weather, because golds can't be hurt by the weather effects. I got lucky in this game, and I had another Rachne, Warrior, and Harpy, so... It's pretty much set. Now I know he has, he's played the Frost Giant, he most likely has another card, either the White Frost to spawn two blizzards, or that card that moves five people and spawns a blizzard. So I do the same thing, Harpy on top, row, want to force him out, he plays it, this guy's smart, he moves into the middle row so that way even if I start consuming something my arachnids are going to be hit by the blizzard too. Now my warrior ended up putting in the middle row just so he keeps eating stuff spawning arachne down there.
Boom, boom. I don't see that card very often in leather decks, but I need something to eat after that, so I was thinking about playing my Necker, but I decided to spot a spider instead with my bat. So in next turn, my warrior will eat it. And boost my Necker up some more. Now I'm trying to hold on to my Witch and my Renew for the third round, because that pretty much closes out the third round. There's another, my Harpy down there. I play the Necker so I can prep for the next turn using my hero to eat two of the cards and then the Necker last so I get the most value out of it. Decide to eat my biggest guy because I know everything on that row is pretty much dead. This will kill my spider, spawn as many as Rachne as I can, eat the healthiest one, then the Necker and spawn another one for my deck. Oh, he's still pretty far ahead. Well, seven points, but... I just think I might have to play my witches this round. Luckily, all he had was that. Looked through his graveyard to see if there was anything worth eating. Really debating on playing that witch. But, yep. No, that pretty much closes out the round. Then I can eat the 8 cost with my other guide. Surprisingly, I had another Blizzard, which I was not expecting, but I had to end up using him anyway. No, he has one card left. I have a Renew, a card that's going to let me grab out my highest card and boost by 3. And I've got a Necker that's going to spawn at the beginning of the next round. So at this point, I've pretty much won it. Got a Harpy that I have no way to eat. So I threw it back. Got the Spider. No way to spawn. Well, yeah, renew. That's why I ended up using renew to get my bat back. I decided just to eat my necker. I figured if he has a scorch, I'd still have a six power and a three. There's only one turn left. He plays Renew. Get another Blizzard. But it's not going to be enough because I'm only taking 3 damage. Renew out my bat. Which he forfeits at that point. Not much else he could have done. Send a good game, I don't get one back. Happens in ranked sometimes. Second game, I didn't get to record to the point where I mulligan, so I'm just going to start. Same play, spider first row. It's most likely going to bait out of weather, just because I like to get that rolling right off the bat. Here's the blizzard. Harpy in the top row. So if you put it in the middle row, they're going to blizzard it, then you're going to be in a really bad spot where... Everything is right there in the middle of the row. You're not going to be able to bait out a third blizzard on the top row. Both my harpies landed there, which I really liked. Now I think he's thinking about playing his third one or not, but he knows he has to.
Now, this turn I add up my damage that I'm going to take. Now, I know here that I'm going to take 8 damage. I'm going to spawn a 3 spider the next turn. So I'm basically going to take 5 damage. But I decide to pass here because he's going to be forced to play another card. And I already got three of his blizzards. That's going to put me at a two card advantage in the third round, most likely. If things go right. Now this guy was running griffins, I don't know why. I think he might have had an old hag in his deck. Drawn to another witch. I already know which card I'm getting rid of. I'd rather have two Neckers than two of the witches. Got another spider. Just happy to see that. And all my gold cards. Now I spawn my spider there anyway, even though there's a fog there. Because I need to start getting my other little spiders out, and since I plan on using my hero this game, this round, want to have it out so I can get three of them at least. Boost up my Neckers some. Another Griffin. Pretty sure he was running an old hag, but he never played it. Play him to draw out my gold, my bat, get a spider. Thinking about eating that 5-1 for round 3 so we didn't have as many foglets, but figured he wouldn't draw into it. Second fog on the range row because he already knows that's where all my spiderlings are going to spawn. Playing him on the top row, trying to see if he has another weather. Eat his griffin. Pretty far ahead at this point. Now here he ends up moving my catacomb into the fog row, so that starts taking damage. But I think it would have been better if he actually moved into the ranged row. So then my spider would have died. And I wouldn't have gotten any more value out of that card. End up spawning one of my Neckers so we, I can make a consume play with my hero next turn. Since he left my spider alive. Pretty much you just have to not play any golds round one and play as many as you need round two to win. Because between round one and round two they're most likely going to use up all their weather cards. And that leaves you safe for round three. Plays a third griffin. Either running that to the counter scale each decks that boost up the things in their graveyard and summon them or he had an old hag. Alright, now I use my hero, what? eat the catacomb first, so I get a spiderling. I'm gonna eat the spiderling second to get a second spiderling. And then my necker, because now he has the boost that he's gonna get, and that spawns me another one. Now he hasn't played any weather cards in my top row yet, but I know he... Probably has one more fog at least in the zero power. And there it is. Now all my rows have fog, but I have a lot of gold, so it won't really affect me as much. Now here I'm on PS4, so there's a succubus glitch where it ends up happening where I can't place it in the back row for some reason. Take one of his griffins. So I end up playing my Fiend, because there's nothing else really to lock. 
Let's take the four damage. That's probably the highest card I'm gonna see in a weather deck. I don't like that card. He eats his card. No, he has nothing. I have four cards. He has a zero. That's it. Now I add up the points. And I see that if I play a six, even if he plays a zero, I'm still going to be one point ahead after I take my damage. So I just decide to play the succubus on my row. Oh. Oh. He plays his hero for some reason. He didn't add up the damage right or something. I don't know what he was trying to do. I think he just accepted that. Pretty much over at this point. Thinks about it for a bit though. Now going into the final round, I have three cards. He is. Well, I'm going to have four cards. He'll have one, so that's pretty much this game. Hope this helps somebody figure out how to fight weather decks a little bit better. Pretty much just have to give up round one. Bait out as many weather cards as you can round one without using any of your gold cards. And then use them round two and three. Mostly round two when he's going to play the rest of his weather cards. And you should be safe to win the round three. Anyway, thank you for watching. See ya.